Hello everyone and welcome back to War Game Red Dragon. There are times when an idea strikes and it doesn't matter how crazy it is, you just have to give it a try. And so this is the first of two games with Alter Squid. The second one will be up tomorrow. And I'm playing as Blue Dragon's Moto with a mechanized twist. So my opener is mostly M41A1s. I have Nani on cheeky A's, which are just goofy little heat uh, tanks for 35 points. And my entire objective is to take Bravo in the opener and ignore the two pointers completely. So, you know, a little unorthodox, shall we say? Not really what I practice doing about that often. Um, and I, well, I was going to say I don't recommend it, but to be honest, I think it could be done just better executed than what I did here. And, and the first note on that is I was really hoping to get golf and be able to take my motorized opener up to this section. Because I have a lot of infantry for this, I have Kyurokus. If I've been able to do what Alter Squid is doing here and get into that section of Bravo, maybe things would have gone a little bit differently. But we have two T64 BMs, 100 point tanks. Not the most common from what I've seen. But, I mean, they tend to be performing decently okay. I, I think the only issue, just looking at the stat line, is 16 frontal armor for that, which uh, is a little, little rich for my blood. But uh, my Kute get mostly in here, we get kind of taken out by Spetsnaz crew, and right away, it's a lot of expensive infantry that was supposed to take these sections and hold them, and sort of isn't. But, we are fighting in, we are doing the best we can, and M41A1 rushing uh, T64s is kind of hilarious, but you know, we're screening out, just trying to get the non Shiki A's online, and we get some shots downfield, not quite enough, but the ninja does get in, and... This actually was really surprising during the KA-52, didn't quite have the range, the Scratchets didn't quite have the range, and so we're pulling back. And just, you know, fair enough, if I can get this going, my short arrow still has 8 rounds, well 8 missiles here I guess, KA-52 only needs to get hit once, because the ninja did hit him once already. So that's shot number 1, miss number 1, shot number 2, miss number 2, shot number 3, miss number 3, and shot number 4, miss number 4. Now, might I remind you... This Tansam short arrow is at veterancy level 3, base accuracy 50%, which means it should be hitting roughly 62-64% of the time. And we just missed 4 shots in a row, that's about uh, 0.36 to the 4th power, which I don't really care to do the mental math on at the moment, but it's small. It's not likely, so we used half of our ammunition here, and um, no line of sight problems should be anyway, and... Yeah, not great. So, in the meantime, we do have the standard toe hold in Bravo, and I'm trying to get, of all things, the Sun Gung Po headed across to Echo, headed across to Charlie, even. Just, you know, why not? It looks like we both had relatively heavy openers here. And then there's a plane by, so right when I see this plane by, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this might be my saving grace way back into the game, because if I can get a forward position somewhere else on the field, that might be enough to do it. Now, my main problem here. I think is something I'm going to talk about later on when it becomes really relevant, but it's not something I noticed building the deck. <clears throat> and this is often one of the challenges uh, for me in particular, I don't know if you guys have the same issue, when you're building a deck that you're not used to, and you don't think about certain values like, oh, I don't know, armor piercing on different units. For example, a Tukshan Saw, 18 armor piercing, 10 rounds per minute. That might not seem horrible, but... In Moto, anyway, for Blue Dragons, there really aren't any options for infantry that can do much better than that. So, my constant uh, thing here was, I'm not sure I have the armor piercing to take this on, and keep in mind, I'm fighting against USSR, and sure, this is a relatively Moto playstyle sort of map, at least until things get dug in, but that's not how Alter Squid is playing. He's playing a very mechanized playstyle in Bravo, he wants this section of town, he wants the center of the map, and he's using BTRTs and Sapri and all of that. These BTRTs have 13 frontal armor, 18 uh, heat from my infantry isn't going to do a lot to that. In fact, these Hu Dao Ren are only 13 AP power heat, so that's going to be one damage per hit off Hu Dao Ren. That really is just kind of amazing. These guys are meant to snipe, well not, not snipe, but rather eliminate, I suppose, infantry fighting vehicles at range. And against that much frontal armor, we can't do that effectively. Now, this I did like. Kyuroku's Nani Nishiki A shooting in at VDV 90 pretty cost-effectively. This was the sort of trading that I had had in mind when I made this deck. It just didn't really end up being all that possible to maintain. Uh, 
didn't really have the tanks to screen things out here and didn't really have the armor piercing to screen things out. So now we're building a little bit more of a net around and these Kyuroku WAPCs are just trying to exploit a gap. So we'll check back in on them in just a minute. But yeah, the Huda run could have done worse. Spetsnaz Gru are dying. The other VDV90 are moving back nearly dead, but they're getting mostly out of the way. Should be able to get a kill here. No, not quite. Should have left the Kyuroku there firing, but yeah, that's VDV. That's going to get... Ooh, here it is. I thought we got one. Maybe. No. Down to one strength each and a total strength of three because Wargame Red Dragon Mathematics makes sense 100% of the time, 10% of the time. So the Kyurokus, I didn't want to go up here because people often guard here, so I came over this way. We're going up that right-hand side there to see what we can do. And the hope is, anyway, that I'll be able to block off the entrance to Delta. So... That's the goal, we'll see how it goes. And I have Sun Gong Pose, KM900s, and lots more infantry coming up here, just cheaper stuff now. And the Sun Gong Pose, these guys I think will surprise you. So each one of them has Quad M2 Browning. So that's four Quad M2 Brownings, that's 16 Brownings you get. Sure, they die. Uh, but they're only 10 points, and if I can kill things with them effectively, like, look at these safety right now. Three, two, one, gone. Nothing else was shooting at them other than the Sun Gong Pose. So that seems decent. Um, I, I still think this maybe situationally has some amount of promise for games that you aren't taking all that seriously. So, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see. Carl Gustav M2s, this is the other thing. Kutai 90 have Carl Gustav M2s as well. 18 AP power, 60% accuracy, 10 RPM. This cannot kill a BMPT. It can barely kill a BTRT, which... Yeah, uh, we're going to see that in action. So, Nanashiki A's on this side are pretty good at screening. This is what I like these tanks for. They shoot comparatively quickly because they have that uh, interesting Japanese autoloader that does change their fire mode. I think uh, it's a quick burst and a long reload for these. And the heat's more effective than you might. We just were a little bit detracted. I think a couple of shots in anyway, because why not? And even though the base accuracy is only 50%, they're cheap tanks. They'll usually anyway go up in veteran C pretty quickly but this was goofy we're dealing one point of damage per hit in the btrts oh man sometimes having an option heavier than this in your deck is a good thing so remaining t64 bm oh no one two right here chumat looking for that kill on the side and there's the first shot hit but not quite sidearm, so we did only take a couple of points away there. I was looking for that second hit, but I was also, well, um, I was also hoping to get in here. Yeah, look at that. Sun Gung Po killing VDV90. Seems good. But my opponent has already now flushed out his defenses. This was not here. If you remember, my Kyurokus went right up this hill, and now there's something there with an ATGM. So what this means is that he's now getting the time to spread his own section. He's doing what I'm doing here. I have tripwire units, probably better ones than Sung Gong, uh, Sung Gong Po's on that side. And just trying to make sure that he asserts his claim here on this side of the map. BMPT coming down, and the second I see this, I don't really know what to do. Um, because my Fiat can't kill it, my Ninja can't kill it, I just sent a CV here to try and get some sort of tick on this, because I had the, the sense I was going to lose Bravo in the game. And right as I capped this, I was really wishing I had those points on the ground. Because, this is the thing, M uh, MiG-25 PD is not exactly the highest performance. But for 100 points, it does what it does very, very well. So uh, we have two main missiles on that thing. And they're both, yeah, I think they're both, yeah, no. Long range is semi-active, short range is fire and forget. But they hit like a ton of bricks, 8 HE power. And this is a pretty short map. So if I try and send things in, like the Peace Pheasant 2, which is... This deck's answer to armor is the, the Peace Pheasant 2. It just gets shot down. And I have to make it worth its while, which the MPT on its own is not necessarily. If I can pick up both that and the BTR-90, maybe then we're talking. But I figured, you know, I have the Junsa here, I have the Fiat, I have the Ninja. Let's get a helicopter and H1T to sit back here and take apart these uh, tools for Soviet player. That was the goal. Let's see if it works out. We did get one of the heavy tanks, the Chumat, now firing in at BTRTs as well. And... I kind of wish I'd had a double squad here. I think that would be a change I do with a Chumont, just because um, they're not a Conqueror's M, right? So 21 AP powered, rather like a spike in terms of that, although different missile characteristics, I think. Um, so here's the plan right now. We have Kutai 90, we have Kirokus. Anything that comes up here, my hope was that it would just die. And that would make 
retaking Delta potentially expensive, and in that time I can kind of make up for some of the deficits that are on the board right now, which are very many at the moment. So we can see a lot of units from Alter Squid moving forward, and that's going to this section. I don't have enough here to defend Tochen Sakiroku's. These vehicles could go right through it. And then this was really goofy. So BMPT, BTR-90, that auto cannon takes out the fire control and the ammo box just right away. Crit 1, crit 2. Fire control malfunctioning on the H1T means I can't even aim if I'm not stunned. So that right there meant that neither of these is getting killed and I just wasted a bunch of points on an H1T. 90 points, that's the same as these two. I needed to get those kills to have this come out at cost. And there it is, there's nothing between them and my Hachini Shiki CV. So we're gonna have to fix that real quick. I'm Gonna have to bring these guys back to get healed up because if that BMPT's auto cannon so much as touches either one of these, they're dead. And I want to point out as well, Alter Squid manually did the uh, micro for that, so he had main gun off. Main gun can't target these two, so it should have been firing anyway. But it's always interesting to see what people do because it can be quite effective. But uh, speaking of can be quite effective, this is what I had sort of hoped for with the fire support of the stack, M4181s, cheap, cheap uh, tanks that get the job done, and then just numbers, short arrow by the way, can't hit a darn thing. That was another four shots, another four, I don't know, we got one. Can't kill a darn thing. This. I was actually regretting taking it, I kind of was thinking maybe I'll give a closed arrow a try, because that of course does have that base 70% accuracy, and we get taken out. But so K-52 auto cannon killing the M41A1s and then taken out from the side, so not quite ideal. Tukjun Saw here now are on their own, and I'm just getting bullied right across this entire map. BTRTs, scratchets, all of this sort of stuff, and yeah, deck selection, deck building matters for a reason, and this is certainly part of it. Now, I don't mean to say for a second that Ultra Squid isn't playing a good game. He certainly is. Um, I was just sitting there going, okay, I have this problem, I know what I need to answer it, and I cannot, with any combination of units, actually bring that force composition in. Just not possible. Um, so certainly was regretting this just a bit. I thought it would be a, a secret good pick here, but Kiroku WFPC is running into a BMPT, and even the Kutai 90, see, ordinarily, let's pretend these are Proletary 90, 23 or 24 AP power on the launcher's 20 RPM, that BMPT is fried not gonna live very long but we land let's see one hit there two hits there still at four strength would be dead with better infantry for this and my kutai are going to get mulched so down four stunned look at this we're even getting weapons jammed on the bmpt that's the only reason the kutai are still alive that's it anything else they'd be gone but there's more bmpts there's two of them right here now we are going to get a couple of good shots in that's a side shot bmp down <coughs> bmpt down to one and we cleaned that up a little bit. That's 120 points in our direction, but now Alter is pushing an Echo and across to Charlie <clears throat> at the same time, which, aside from taking a lot of coordination, is very much an effective choice here, because if he strangleholds me out of Charlie and pushes my one-pointer Echo and has Bravo, I just surrender. Uh, that's just the answer, is, is yeah, just, you're not getting out of that. Uh, so, you know, that was what I was afraid of. We did lose one of the Peace Pheasants, so not ideal there either. But I do have forces on the ground, and a triple stack of Nanyan Shiki A's will take out a lot of fire support pretty quickly, even if it is that high frontal armor stuff. I just needed a bit more there before I felt comfortable pushing. So we're going to just retreat back in a little bit. And this was really goofy. That K-29TB, veteran to level 2, that is carrying a enemy command infantry that's headed up the far side of Delta. And if I could have killed it right there, we would have cost Alter Squid 140 points. And instead, we just let them know we were here. So, not great, I'd say. Probably uh, double plus ungood, as they say in 1984. Uh, which I know is definitely the reference we're going for. That's Peace Pheasant 2 coming in, and I'm just trying to get that last vehicle that was in there. We haven't seen more come in, and I do have a KM900 over here now. It's a bit far in the woods. I'm not too confident I'd see much going around. KM900 is looking for that command vehicle, and I... If there was a sort of time later on in this game where I felt maybe it can be done, this was about that. I should have gotten my Hachi Nishiki CV back up here earlier, gotten that cap. I need it now because Delta is capped, and the KM900 was doing surprising work, just shooting in the K29TV, peeling off three points of damage there, and keeping it perpetually suppressed. 
So helicopters can't really aim if they get too overwhelmed. And we got a couple uh, bits of strength there off of it, it's not too terrible. Now, that command infantry I think has moved, so we can't really rely on that on a singular location. And look at this, yeah, look at that. Third shot, okay, I guess we had one hit there. Fourth shot, I'm really debating just replacing my short arrows. These are outbedded, and they can't hit a darn thing, and it doesn't matter how far your range is if everything you do misses. You just, you need to hit. So I'd always wonder why people take the closed arrow. Now I kind of understand. You just, you want that one unit to die right then, because it needs to. And you need to be able to do other stuff on the board. And this is an excellent example of it. We have a BMPT headed up here. And, well, sure, it's a new fresh BMPT. But what actually makes this, if you look, if you look these Kyurokus are spotted. They weren't before. That's going to be the K-52. This K-52 should be dead. We fired four shots at it off of a short arrow. Should be dead. Now granted, my opponent could have definitely gotten a replacement by now and brought it over, but the fact that this is still alive means he doesn't even have to. He can spend those points on the ground. Fair number, it's 130 points. That's two BMPTs, which we have one, two right there. Now, this is another mistake. Uh, Peace Pheasant 2 doesn't have the highest armor piercing, 26. And I was trying to kill both of the BMPTs, so one, two, there it is, one, two. We only landed one out of two on both those volleys, which means both these BMPTs are alive with two strength. What I should have done is just not split that up, I should have gotten the kill on one of them. And then just said, okay, fine, that's the most I can salvage out of here, that'll be okay, we'll be okay, we'll do other stuff. At least we got a single BMPT and we were able to get 60 points worth of return. Because Charlie, there's enough stuff there right now to not have it be undefended, but we're definitely behind on um, points on the field. So that is something I'm going to have to contend with, and it's going to be relatively unpleasant to do so, because, yeah, it's just <laughs> game well played to, to my opponent here so far. It's just defeating me at every turn, and even this, I was expecting to be a lot more difficult for him than what he, than what he does here. So if you ever have trouble retaking this zone, if you, you know, if, if you lose it, and you think to yourself, well, what do I do? That was really clean. A couple of BMPTs, a little bit of recon, shooting in, making sure that none of my infantry is effective here. Now, you'll have trouble if there's more of a cap on the left side of Delta, but there wasn't. So... Yeah, it, it worked out pretty well, and I've actually been pushed that far recently by Canadian and Crippling Depression in, I think, a 2v2 that should have already gone up, but I'm not sure it did. I've recorded it, certainly. Um, I think it'll go up. If it hasn't already, it'll go up in a couple of days. And taking this section back of the near side of Delta to the Gulf uh, opener was very rough. Now, after all this time, we have still... Ooh, sorry about that. We did have eyes on the Command Infantry again right there. And I've finally gotten enough stuff that I'm feeling confident to push in. And this is just what I'm talking about. It's 80 points of tanks, sure, but it's 8 guns. And the Hudao Ren are going to just walk forward, make sure that we can find our opponents, because I didn't have any recon here, why not? I mean, why do have recon, rather? When the Hudao Ren are just going to face check everything, and then as soon as they do, all of this is going to fire in, and there we go. So Seipuri, and Seipuri should defeat Hudao Ren very easily, especially in this approach situation. They definitely will get a lot of damage off. But look at this, VDV-90 down to 6. That was the first volley. The Nani and Shiki A's are shooting in. It's a lot of points here. But the intention was to come up with something that could handle any number of even good infantry relatively quickly. We lose a single M41A1 killing VDV-90 and a bunch of Seipuri, although that didn't do anything. Yeah, I think the Sun Gung Po's were actually more effective there than the M41A1's, just strictly anti-infantry damage per second. So we'll see what the second shot... yeah, there it is. And the remaining safety do get a nice... Ooh, no they don't. That. Yeah, okay, that's fun. This is what this deck was meant to do. Now, I think my mistake was trying to build a moto deck, play it like a mechanized deck, and then just be happy, but... Uh, yeah, why not? It was fun. And uh, oftentimes, I, I feel like, especially with the emphasis on ranked and things like that, and just the emphasis to win, kind of lose out on the, it's a game, have fun. Do something stupid, do something silly, uh, do something you enjoy, something you want to try, and in the best case, it works out for you, and you have a really excellent game that you really like, and worst case, you have something like this, where you're sitting there going, okay, but what if I can do, and that's how I spent this game, I spent the entire game going, what if I could, what if I could, what if I could, and feeling like it was just out of reach, which, it, yeah, it, at this point, 
is not looking too hot. But keep in mind, we're still up 98 points. We have 20 minutes left in the match. It's more than enough time for him to, uh, for my opponent to make that up, even with a plus one right now. But he doesn't have a plus one right now. So play the game that you're playing. If my opponent is not going to take the free tick on Bravo Foxtrot Echo, fair enough. That just extends the value of my 98 point lead here. And if I had gotten this recapped earlier, that would be even higher. So another unit I was just trying out is the Horyong. So we are trying out the Blue Dragon's Napalm artillery piece. And well, not Napalm, sorry. A uh, high explosive. I think my verdict on this is that I don't like it because it has such a long, I think, 240 second reload volley time, which in addition to the aim time makes it so that you can't use this thing all that often. Now our target was the command infantry from Alter Squid, so they are right here in that central town. I have mostly aimed for the middle of the map, or well, the middle of the section of it. High dispersion, it looks like I was maybe more centered a little bit on the back, but we do have a couple of shells landing nearby, no damage there on the first one. and. Let's see... Yeah, we get a stun. Fair enough. That's just going to be from suppression, probably. Down to two. Nearly getting the kill there. Half, well, halfway to it. This thing was at four. Yeah, not a lot of luck. So I, I think it's unfortunately just not the best at town clearing. Which, it's not in Uragon. It's only 70 points each. But when you buy two of those, you really need to return on investments. 140 points. I needed to kill something. My hope was that I could kill that command infantry and get most of my money back right there. But, alas, no luck. Now, Jigsa Huagibon are doing decently well here. I do still have Tokjun Sa, Sun Gun Po, and Suja Buntai now moving up. And Suja Buntai double stack will be able to take out BDV90 pretty well, too. So, 30 points for the double squad of Suja Buntai, 25 points for the single squad of BDV, and this should be a pretty asymmetrical fight. Even though these are regulars, and the BDV90 are, of course, shock troops, two guns firing versus one, you'll get bad. Uh, well, I assume these guys were calm. Yeah, maybe not. Killing at about the same rate. Oh, BDV90 are good. Who would have thought? So, BMPTs. This was interesting. I lost one of the cheeky A's. I lost the second one right here. And this is the downside to heat. So, oh, pardon the um, background noise. There's somebody on the highway who thinks that... Cool. Um, the non even cheeky A's, if they were kinetic, would be penning BMPT's armor very easily right now. Because they're heat, they're still only doing one damage a piece. It doesn't matter how close they are, they're not going to be able to kill this guy. Yeah, look at that. Two shots, two hits, two damage. If these were any other Nani on Shiki with higher kinetic scaling, or any kinetic scaling at all, that would be a dead BMPT, and this retake would probably have a bit of a chance, because the, the Sochung Su could lead the way. Nani on Shiki A has a really fast fire rate. That's a fresh BMPT, by the way, not the same one that we just saw. And at this point, I see this push, and I'm sitting there going, yeah, the beginning of the end. <laughs> There's, there is no way that I'm reasonably getting this back. So we're going to go up to the speed 2 for just a minute here as the game does continue. I did like the pressure in Echo Fox. I think this is a nice thing to do when you're really feeling like you need to pull your opponent's reinforcements somewhere else. Make them just do something they don't want to. Fine. Uh, worst case, you'll buy yourself a little bit of time and potentially a later map advantage. But double BMPT, took Junsa moving forward just because I've decided, you know what, now or never, let's go for that late game base recon infantry, <laughs> why not? Uh, Kiroku's trading in, and this is just, it's the issue with this uh, whole philosophy. BMPTs kill everything I have. They kill the Kirokus, they kill my infantry, they kill my helicopters, for goodness sakes. And there's, uh, there's just not a lot of good answers on the Peace Pheasant 2, but we don't see anything. Not able to get in, we get the kill of the BMPTs. It was rough, to say the least. Sorry, I'm uh, yawning just a bit. It's been a pretty long couple of weeks, as I'm sure most of you guys can sympathize with. It's always a long couple of weeks. It's just a matter of what's causing the length of the time. So we do engage the BMPT there. Tokjun saw finally able to get a stun. We do get a kill. But the only answer for it is just drowning them in infantry. So 60 points right there. The Hudao Ren are 40 points to the double stack. And Kyrokus, And that was an isolated BMPT, which... A lot of the stuff is not going to be. We have seen Motostrelki move forward, we have seen the five point boxes, and there's just more BMPTs. I think uh, Alter, we were in voice at the uh, at the time, said he was he had bought all of his BMPTs, and I believe it. We've seen so many of them, there's another one in Bravo, there's one in Foxtrot at least that we've seen already. 
coming down the pipe here, and this is just brutal. The only thing I could think of, again, desperation move, is Jigsaw Hwagibon. Now, they're only 13 um, in terms of AP power, and it is heat, not kinetic. But I figured, get the recoil rifles firing, maybe we can take out a couple of things. It turns out we just run into the frontal armor of the T-72As, and I probably would have been better off with something like Mortuk Jinsa, with uh, something with 18 even armor piercing instead of just the, the really not great Jigsaw Hwagibon's 13 AP power. <laughs> Makes me miss, um, oh, what is it, the Finnish Raskas in Kurima. They have 16 armor piercing on the recoil rifles. Those things behave like an entirely different beast, I swear. 16 AP uh, heat is no joke at all. It'll actually one-shot two frontal armor vehicles, IFVs, anything like that. It can be pretty brutally effective. But BMPT, C-72A is closing in, and let's fast forward through this a little bit. As we do just take a look in at the end, Just I, I'm pretty curious what units got any value at all, if there were any, um, and what we could learn from it, because I do want to use this deck again. I, I think... There are ways that it could be, well, could be more horrible, <laughs> I suppose, but they are few and far between, so I think USSR might have been a tough matchup, but that's also making a couple excuses for the deck that I couldn't deal with the armor, but a lot of nations have T-72As, and I couldn't deal with the T-72As, let alone the Americans. so that needs to change. I I might have just missed something in the Blue Dragon's Moto Infantry Tap, but I don't think I did. I was looking for the higher-end armor-piercing, because, uh, yeah. even though I said this was a bit of a crazy idea, just doing what we can, we do kind of come up with um, potential problems for a deck in the deck-building process. Got a bit of a laugh here from Alter Squid as well, capping the fob, turning everything off out of pure spite. It's it, mostly because it does nothing at this point, but uh, with my opponent getting a plus three, I'm pushed out of Charlie, and that is going to be a good game. So. 2775 kills for Alter Squid and 1660 for me. Very one sided game there, and just looking at this, the Chumat are about the only bright point in the entire deck. So we got a BTRT, we got both of the T64 BMs, that's 200 points worth of kills there off of a single Chumat, not, not to mention double BTRT, BMPT, Screshit with the Factoria inside, another Screshit, and a five point box. The one unit that I had that was worth its weight. In gold, everything else kind of struggled. Kute 90 killing BTR 90 is worth it right off the bat, plus they had a couple more. But um, not a lot of consistency is what I would say. Eh, even the 9 and Shiki A's did okay, paying themselves off BTR team safely. That's one 9 and Shiki A paying for himself. Other one, yeah, paid for himself by 15 points. If it works, you know, if it works. So, Hu Dao Ren got the last shot on BMPT. I don't know, I, I'm going to refine this. I want a surprise moto deck that's a little unorthodox, just because yeah, you, everyone can play South Africa moto, and it's what you expect out of South Africa, but Blue Dragons, you don't necessarily expect this, and therein lies the potential for a plot twist. So that's going to be all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.